we're having this debate right now about Uh-oh. the Cardi B making these down. You, you look like you're a young person. You look very young. At least you probably moisturize very well. I and uh, yes, you probably do. And um, I'm struggling right now with that image of uh, us just that everything's just wet and gushy. And that's it. There's, I'm just I'm struggling. Um. I don't like the word gushy. I just don't. I don't even, even reading it's like, mm-mm. And I'll be honest with you, I have not seen the video in its entirety yet um, because I am on the internet a lot. Um, and I wanted to wait until the hype settled down so I can really gauge if I like it or not. But, I mean, I'm fascinated with just some backlash against these grown women talking about their genitalia as if Little Kim wasn't doing that hardcore, as if Foxy Brown wasn't doing that either. Um, it's been a lot of backlash over the weekend. I mean, for me, I don't like the scrub. I don't want to hear anything about that from time to time, but I also am like, well, these girls are doing it, you know? All right, let me ask you this, Morgan. <laughs> Cause, because Image, you know, as you as you write in your book, you're talking about, you know, your people and your legacy and, and what's been taken from us, right? Yeah. And, and the Geechee Gullah story is just a microcosm of what has happened all over the country. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Part of that is because people don't see us. Or they see us yeah. through the lens of these tropes, right? Mm-hmm. Through the mm-hmm. lens of these stereotypes. And as a young woman, you mm-hmm. know, if this is projected out into the globe, which it is, mm-hmm. and you go to another country, they're mm-hmm. expecting you to show up like a Megan Thee Stallion or a Cardi mm. B. And how do you feel? Like if somebody wants to slap your ass when you get off an airplane? Well, I will say this. When I go overseas and I travel overseas a lot, I've been to Japan, I've been to Egypt, I've been to Rome. I've never had someone want to slap my behind because of Cardi B or Megan Thee Stallion. Um, Yet! I say this, I, Wait, I, you I, haven't traveled now after gushy, wet, whoppy, dop, slop, well, top, well, poppity pop, hip hop. Well, I will say this, even when Nicki Minaj came out with Anaconda, I wasn't getting that. Now, I live in Harlem, and there was a time where men on the street just wanted to slap my behind because... Just because I was a woman on the street. I think what's interesting about Megan Thee Stallion and Cardi B is that they are multidimensional. You see Cardi B, she's in conversation about politics with uh, Bernie Sanders. You see Megan Thee Stallion, she's getting her degree. So it's not like they're just talking about sex, 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 sex all the time. They can do a wide range of things, and I think that is what improves their marketability and makes them very relatable as women. So if people come to me and be like, well, Megan Thee Stallion is doing this, she's talking about sex, I'm like, but they're working on their legacy of other rappers that have talked about sex, and they also are very intelligent, they're funny, and I think they have long careers ahead of them. So whatever they do should not have, should not, now granted, black women often stereotype a lot, but if people can't take the time to do a quick Google search on what all these women are doing aside from talking about sex, that's their problem, not mine. Well, you know damn well they're not going to do a Google search of all of that. All right, Morgan Jerkins. And, and as a journalist and as a writer, you know damn well that if somebody in the media, and we had this conversation about the N-word being used and how Hebrews got bleeped out of the Benjamins and how the uh-huh. K-word got bleeped out of the Michael Jackson song because yeah. some people understand the fierce protection of your your legacy and your image and how powerful mm-hmm. it is when it's allowed to be go- to to be projected out unfettered unchecked and right. challenged and i hear what you're saying but what if it is a tool or a weapon to keep us in a particular position that's why you promote and you put money and you put resources behind something like a gushy wop nasty this and you don't celebrate somebody like rhapsody uh, at the level that you should or bah- bahamedia or or the the myriad of others chica Others who are out there rapping and talking and singing about things that are deep and, you know, a little bit more Absolutely. challenging. Right. I think that's a, that's another conversation added on to this about the music industry, because there have been many conversations before about how the music industry doesn't support black women, period. Even Nicki Minaj, who at one point was uncontested as far as female rappers went for a decade, was like, they still ain't helped me out. And she was singing about raunchy stuff. Do you know? And I think for me, and this goes into my book, is that black people are diverse. Black people are distinct. And even though we are our ancestors or people we know right now are suffering from land displacement and you know and state violence and all those different things, many narratives should exist at once. And that's why me as a writer and a journalist, I am very careful about rhetoric 
what people used to talk about black women. And I think you and I both know professionals, we can tell when someone's talking to us and they're not trying to converse in good faith. They're trying to rile us up and they're trying to make, they're trying to pigeonhole us. And I think it's important that me and you can do the work that we do alongside other black women that do the work that we may not always agree with, but the fact that they're still existing and thriving and doing what they want to do speaks to the multitudes of black female identity in general. And I think that that's important. I, I, and I know Drew wants to get in. It's like a big double dutch, but I'm, I'm hitting this rope fast. So it's just me, me and Morgan right now. I'm spinning it because as, as you're talking, while I completely 100% agree with what you're saying, in the back of my mind, I'm also mindful that the the options, right? If 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 mm-hmm. I'm able to project this out as an option, like Drew, a lyric, I, you think I made this money cooking and cleaning? So yeah. you're, you're subliminally and also telling mm-hmm. me overtly for a young girl that's in school right now that doesn't have mm-hmm. your your acumen, Morgan, that's not, you know, mm-hmm. wired the way you are to achieve certain things. Hmm. Mm-hmm. This is a pathway to 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 get all of the money, all of the Birkin bags and the shoes, red bottoms and mm-hmm. live my life, have these nails, this hair and all of this. I want that lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I'm, I, I want that Lamborghini and I can get it mm-hmm. because Cardi said I can do it with my wet and gush. Boom. Yeah, Yeah. I dropped that. I think for me, I think what you said in the beginning was something so important was the option. For me personally, I want black women to be able to choose what they want to do and often be afforded opportunities they weren't afforded in the past. Now, granted, I'm not a Gen Zer. I'm a millennial. And when I was growing up, now, granted, I don't know if it was like wet and gushy, but there were also very explicit songs that I was singing them. I was getting in trouble singing them before Sunday service started. That was me. You know what I'm saying? But people didn't write me often because I chose to say, okay, let me go to college. Let me go to grad school. But I have other female friends of mine. When certain songs come on, we even are shocked how explicit they are and how we were singing at a young age and we chose different things. So I think... I believe that there might be some people who look at Cardi B or can look at anybody on Instagram at this moment right now and be like, oh, I want to, I want this because I see them, you know, advertising X, Y, and Z. But there may be other black girls that are like, I like this song. You know, it's about, as we say, but I still want to go to, you know, be a beautician. I still want to be an anesthesiologist. It's all about accepting the multitudes. That just because somebody listens to this music, that doesn't mean they're going to go down the same path as someone. And even if they go down the same path as someone, that's their option. That's their choice. 866-801-8255. Yes, we do want options. But in a country right now where black folk are literally fighting for our lives, I don't know if I want, me personally, us mm-hmm. to have to have this conversation right now when Chicago and Portland and all over Mike Brown we celebrated his 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 murder yesterday mm-hmm. and it's like yeah we're still in a racial pandemic can we do better should we do better should there be an inside way yes where you and your girls can have this conversation but you got in trouble for it because it wasn't quite right but yeah we're going to always from time and memorial have kids that are going to be sneaking and listening to things they shouldn't be but we know mm-hmm. what right and wrong is and i think we've lost that compass and i think there's a blurred existence right now where we don't know what's right and wrong a lot of mm-hmm. people and that's mm-hmm. the trouble that i have right now Eight six six eight zero one eight two five. all right drew Go ahead. I slowed the rope down. <laughs> All I want to say, Karen, is I'm thinking about it like this right here. One is it is it there is a modicum of inside and outside to it because this song is not going to be played on the radio. Like if you you're going to have to you're going to have to go out and search for this song as opposed to it just showing up in your earshot without you having any control over that. What's so, radio, Drew? Who's listening to the radio right now? But I'm saying it's, it's, it's knock not, it off. Like Nobody listening gonna, to the damn radio. It's not like you're going to accidentally hear this song. You got to go out and look for this song to hear it. You're not going to accidentally hear this song unless you are prob- unless you're in a club somewhere, right? Like that's number one. Number two, I mean, mm. this is this may be splitting hairs, but um, but the song does sort of give you some some options uh, and some. Um, some modicum of women taking control of their own sexuality. I'm not a woman, so I can't say I can't say that um, from a from an internal standpoint or whatever. But Megan actually doesn't say I, um, I, this dude needs to go out and buy me a bag or buy me a car. She says she can pay my tuition, right? So that's a different kind of rap perspective. She when she says that, she's like, you know, yo, 
I made him pay my tuition. This is a sister that said, I got it. I'm going to get you to, I'm going to, I got this. I'm going to get you to do this for me, but I'm going to flip it like how I want to flip it because I'm in control. I'm in control of this I situation. We're having this conversation. I'm in control of my body. Okay. I'm in control of my destiny. My destiny. Is, and I got some choices and some options. Now, that's not, that's not the story for every single person, but I got to say that, I got to say that that's, that there's a difference there. Okay. Right. All right. Um, we are in the last days where we call it right, wrong, and wrong, right. I said it. And I, I can't believe we are justifying something that all of us in this room right now know is dead wrong. I, I know we know it. I know we know it. Like, I know you, I'm, I'm looking at y'all right now. Y'all are, y'all about some bull crap, both of y'all. 866-801-825. I love y'all, but y'all know, y'all know what I'm saying is right. Anyway, all right, but that's not why Morgan is here. But guys, you could, you could challenge me. Go ahead, Morgan. Go ahead. Oh, no, that's it. I was going to say, I'm like, the funny thing is, and I think this goes to, like, the digital age where everything is so fast and you have to react so fast, especially if you're in the media, is that, like, when I look Cardi B and Megan, I'm like, granted, Cardi B magnifies her vulgarity when she's on these IG lives and stuff talking about it, but they working out of a tradition. Like, they working out of a long tradition of black women talking very, talking perversely about their about their bodies. And I'm not even just talking about, like I said, oh, the Little Kims and the Foxy Browns of the 90s. I'm talking about, who is her name? Well, Melly Jackson? What's that? Like Melly Jackson did not talk <laughs> about her gushy, ushy. Okay, I'm, I'm going to go back Ever. further. I'm going to go back further. Come 1920, on. Bessie Smith, if you okay. listen to Till the Cows Go Home, that was a yeah. hundred years ago. But that was couched in cleverly within allegory. Yeah. Oh, no, she no, didn't no, 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 no. What's she saying? Oh, uh-uh. Come on. That was yeah, let me, now I'm, you making me Google song, right now in real time. To the cows Bessie. come home. If you look up those lyrics in the 1920s, and we're talking about lynching, we're talking about Jim Crow, we're talking about massive racial terrorism right now. And that was a tough time, too. He was saying it. No. Oh, okay. Remote. Yeah, baby, I'll suck your. D- okay. Oh, suck wow. Now, look, I just learned. You better. Trina, you, this is why. You, let me tell you. This is why. And again, you know. We need to have adult conversations. We need to have them out of our emotions. Like, I'm good. I'm good. I'm sitting back. You just brought something. You dropped something to the table. Now I had to go and Google search and do, do some saying. research. Yeah, I got a man I love. I got a man I like. Every time I F them men's, I give them the doggone clap. Wow, she giving people venereal diseases and talking about it. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm listen, wrong. Even, okay. Even, even, Look. Look, wow. you are right. What? I got us. I'm wrong. I'm going to I'm sit saying. back. This is why it's important to talk to people smarter than you about a topic and ask I'm questions. Yeah. You got when that, Morgan. Talk, I'm just saying, I mean, in my book, I tell you, I'll say it. Like, oftentimes the past and the present with some of African-American experiences, they converge with each other. They will work out of a hundred year old legacy. This ain't nothing. Have y'all grown up in a Christian tradition? Ain't nothing new under the sun. This is not new. It's not. All right. It, it, draw, it, it even take, takes me back to Lawanda Page, how she, how she would talk about, you know, Aunt Esther, who uh, from Sanford and Son fame, but Lawanda Page was an amazing comedian in her own right. And I used to listen to the, to the record, the Lawanda Page records on the sneak sneak in the house, and she would be talking about how. Her legs is long and brown and like and they spread like peanut butter and I was oh like, my lord, oh my no, no, no. Nothing, nothing beats this Bessie Smith till the cows yeah, come home. Smith, yeah, the, yo, she just dropped. All right, I gotta shut up now. All right, so tell me about your book, Morgan. Look at that. Look at that pivot. 